press that long press. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, why are you people laughing? Do you know why I'm laughing? No, because, you know, it's so funny to me. I have to, like, try and sound smart throughout this thing. <laughs> it's like, I'm, what, what are you saying? I'm smart. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. First class, I mean. Yeah, I'm smart, I'm smart. I'm just kidding. But, hey, guys, it's really nice to see everyone and meet everyone. Everybody in uni, like, really knows how to dress. It's like, everybody looks so fine, pretty. <laughs> That university of first choice thing, today was the first day I ever heard it, and I'm like, eh? <laughs> was, was uni like your first choice? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay, oh, okay, 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 okay. Oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool stuff. Hello, everyone. It's such great honor to be here. When I was asked to be here, I said I wasn't comfortable talking to students because you can never know what students are saying in their minds. <laughs> I mean, I was a student myself, so I know. You know, you could be talking up here and everybody's, you know, clapping and in their minds they are saying, Kiloshi. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, the idea, you are, you are talking and you're sounding so smart and they are saying, ah, oh, Sakoma, I'll be going time to law. <laughs> you know, I can't vibe. But for this one in particular, you know, I had to accept because I'm really excited to be here, to be seated amongst great minds and to speak to you because I have heard a lot of good things about Unilag students and a lot of good things about the members of the Investment Society as well. So, yes. Um, oh, wow. You guys are not part. No, is everybody part of the Investment Society? Oh. All right, because this side clapped and everybody was. But please give it up for the Investment Society. Thank you um, for putting this together. Uh, um, so when I saw the topic, I said, I mean, you know, right, private capital, macroeconomic policy, um, you know, all these big, big words. And I was like, mm mm, all this, hello, my boy. <laughs> mm. Wait, you know, this is professional, guys. We don't do that. <laughs> You know, but, I mean, what do you expect from the largest sub-Saharan student economic and finance conference? Um, once again, I think the organizers deserve a round of applause for making it to the fourth edition. Um, so, let me tell you, if you try to organize anything in Nigeria, you know what it is. It's such an asshole. And so, when you start, it's good, but when you can consistently do it, I think it's a superpower, and I'm really proud of you guys. Um, okay, so I'm going to start reading this speech. Please don't yimu, don't complain. And if you're clapping, make sure it's genuine. Make sure, like, when I say something smart, be like, oh my god. <laughs> um, like she said earlier, the first time when I was there at this event, I was actually assisting my boss. I used to work in a fintech as a growth specialist. And so my boss had come to speak on the panel session and I was going to assist her with sharing pamphlets so that you guys would have used the application we're working with that time. But this is the second time I'm here and it's a little bit different now because I came in as the guest speaker. So, <laughs> and I, I mean, that's the interesting thing about life, guys. Um, life can come at you so fast and change is constant and power is transient. And so what's in, in whatever position you find yourself, Ensure that you are good and you put in the best in your position. So the past few days of my life are days I've never experienced before. And I'll tell you guys why. I have stayed awake for 24 hours this week. <laughs> yeah, so let me tell you guys something. Never, ever, ever, ever in my life did I ever think I would stay awake for 24 hours. Because there are two things I don't joke with, food and sleep. <laughs> no, like, I do not play with any of those two. I, I, I was saying it, that I didn't want to stay awake for 24 hours when I had to write my final year papers. So why am I staying awake for someone I'm trying to break the Guinness World Record? But let me tell you guys something. There's something about inspiration and we don't talk about it often in our communities. So we must build and find people who inspire us to be better. People who push us to be better human beings, and not just for ourselves, but the people around us. 
The only reason why I denied myself of sleep for 24 hours was because I had seen someone who was not sleepy for 24 hours was also cooking while at it. You know when you see some things that you say, I, I don't, I'm trying to look for the right Yoruba word, but Emi <laughs> Miyobe, this power is bigger than my own. <laughs> That's what literally I saw, and I saw strength, and I marveled, and I was really surprised. And you know, it is important that as individuals are currently surrounded with people who would forever push us and inspire us. And so you never know what you can do until you see someone who pushes you to do it. And so many times as students as well, you know, we complain about my education, my grades, and sometimes it just takes a level of us leaving the friends group that we are in, or, you know, just trying a different environment, because you need people who will push you. Two people cannot be on D and be trying to push each other to A. <laughs> like, that's not the way life works, sadly. You need someone who is on A, who is on an A, because they're probably doing something the other group is not doing. And so the person introduces you to that new stuff. See, and I see, you've likely seen it on the news, on social media, and people talk about it. It's one of the biggest news in Nigeria. I now call her Queen Ilda anyway, <laughs> because to attempt to break a Guinness World Record of the longest cooking marathon by an individual, not only did she break the record by its seven hours, she set a record for 96, and then broke it with 100 hours. Please, she deserves a round of applause, guys. Yes. Now, that is something that didn't just shake me, but moves me. Hundreds of hours of cooking while standing. Me, if I'm boiling Indomie, <laughs> I will put it on the fire and go back to sleep and come back and check in five minutes. I will not stand to boil Indomie. And there's nothing I stand to cook. But you know, why many people clapped and screamed, including me, for the challenging feats Ilda had accomplished? Every time Ilda and I talk after that time, we, tell, we talk about how wild this, it was, how she has inspired us all, and how she had done something most of us did not think was even possible. Ilda's success has got me and every young person thinking what it means to succeed here. It means relentlessness. It means to be determined. It means when it's difficult, you pull through. It means if you can think it, you can do it. And I want us all to say it together, if I can think it, I can do it. One more time, guys. If I can think it, I can do it. Yes. All over the country, many young people are planning in numbers, year in and year out, to leave this country. They've known all their lives to start a new life, a new career, a new home in a different country. This is not a speech to convince you that trying to leave this country is a good or bad decision. In fact, I encourage it a lot of times. Even my own siblings doesn't school here anymore because I'm sure someone in this room is trying to jack right now. Do we have anybody trying to jack yes. uh, Well, congratulations to you guys. Um, and I honestly get it because, I mean, countless strikes, you spend six years studying a four-year course, and you come out and still probably have to face unemployment, and no one should have to go through that, but unfortunately, it's the sad truth of the Nigerian students. But we can't all jump her. So what's possible, however, is to think and plan and execute along the lines of redefining what it means to succeed within the Nigerian state. Projections show that by 2050, Africa's population will double. By 2000, one in three people on the earth will be Africans. However, this continent is yet to achieve the future for the generation that is coming. She needs to face significant challenges that have hindered its progress and prevented it from fully realizing its true potential. There's poverty, there's inadequate infrastructure. A lot of presidents throughout the African continent have been in power for years. And governance issues, Africa has struggled to overcome these obstacles. In multiple publications, it has been re-emphasized that Africa is the future. I mean, a lot of musicians sing it every time, one of which is Bonner Boy, who everybody calls the words African Giant. And you know, Beyonce talked about it in her album, calling us the key to the kingdom. But how do we realize and achieve that future? How can Africa's young people, not just Ilda or Thames, or Tunde or Nokoya of Chess and Slums, of, or Odunewini or Piggy Vest, or Livinus of the Investment Society, <laughs> But how can all of us 
be a collective to empower, to maximize our potential. Africa and Nigeria must work. Our systems must favor young people. Young people must be strategically helped. We must recognize the interconnection between private capital, macroeconomic policy, and talent development. These three pillars are not isolated entities, but rather intricately intertwined, each reinforcing and amplifying the impact of the other. The Economic Times refers to the macroeconomic policy as setting rules and regulations and guidelines as achieving economic goals such as stable prices, high employment, and, you know, unfortunately, this is not what Nigeria is. The current president banned Twitter, and we all know that, and that affected a lot of people because Twitter was being used by most social media users. How many of us use Twitter here? Yeah. yeah, quite a number of us. And that banned a lot of people and stopped a lot of people's businesses. So Nigeria especially, and Africa as a whole, must invest in young Africans because when we invest in young Africans, we invest in Africa's future, and to the adults here especially. If you believe in Africa's young population, then you must put your money where your mouth is. We must set up initiatives for young people to get a boost in their career. Which young person are you sponsoring? Which young founder are we helping out? Which part of their future are we optimizing for success? And I don't know if lecturers are here. I myself went to university and a public university. And I know that when you go to a public university, you find people who are just unnecessarily sometimes wicked for no reason. I had lecturers who said A is for me, B is for my wife, C is for my children, I can give you D and F, and they will actually do it. And it's, and it's, wild, and it's wild to me that they will actually do it. And then we talk about helping the young people and helping Nigerians. If you're frustrated in an average Nigerian at the university level, what, the, the person has given up already, even before the person tries to get into the, you know, the employment state. And lecturers, even in particular, must encourage young students and encourage young people. A is for students. B, B, B is not for your wife. Your wife has graduated. Give it to the people who need it. I chose to address talent development last because it's within the most control, it's the one within the most control of us here. And even though we cannot affect macroeconomic policy and all of that, we ourselves as individuals must work on ourselves. I tell my friends every day, everybody says, I want to be successful, I want to be successful. But success is not something you just say, it's something you must work towards. You can't say, oh, I'm going to graduate to the university with a first class by just saying it. You have to read. And so our lives must get better by being honest and living in truth that we must work harder. How are you and your group of friends motivating each other towards success? A huge testament to the power of collaboration is what I speak about oftentimes. There is nothing better than collaboration, and there's no need trying to form Jagaban for everybody or anybody. Having 40% of, of a dream that came to life is better than having 90% of a dream that did not come to life. So as individuals, stop hoarding opportunities from your friends. Tell your friends about opportunities. If your friend is a president, your life has changed forever. And so if you see your friend doing well and getting better at things, appreciate them, support them, and push them towards it. because. The blessings of my friend is also my blessing. I have no doubt that Nigeria will live up to its role in development and growth of the African continent, but every one of us seated in this auditorium has a role to play, and we must play that role. We must resort to community building, where we are not selfish, where everyone sees themselves as a part of a greater goal. Everybody complains about governance and the presidency as a whole, but from student leaders, class governors, class governors would add 200 naira to material that the lecturer gave you. And let me tell you something about things like that. It sounds very simple, but 200 naira is what turns to 5 million. And 5 million is what turns to 1 billion. And most times, the people who get in power are people who are interested in it from the school level. People who did SUG presidents, and class governors, and we're in honorable positions, senate house, and all of those things that we do. And so when you see things that are not right, ladies and gentlemen, please call it out. 
I know Nigeria is not the easiest place for anyone. And obviously, there are ways and scopes that we use to find things. But there are some things that we must not accept from cradle, because it's from cradle that it develops. And so when you know that your class governor has added 200 naira to your material, don't be shy and say, Egbo, Edakbada. <laughs> also, I want to say to university students, cut yourself some slack. Social media puts so much pressure on everybody, and especially on my Snapchat. People always asking me, oh my God, how can I be so rich? Oh my God. And then I ask how old are you, and you're like, 18, where? You're in 200 level. Will you calm down, man? <laughs> and really, you should be rich. But I tell people, I tell people from my experience, that a lot of the people you're seeing graduated university. Life works in time and seasons. And even though you're maybe thinking of your age and all of that, ladies and gentlemen, life is in time and seasons. You will graduate, you will party as much as you can, you will be so rich that the money will stress you itself. So please take school serious. Read. Study to improve and be better. And not just be better in schoolwork. Gain skills. Learn an extra skill. It could be speaking in French, you know, I came from Paris. <laughs> Come on, Sava. Yo, kill me. What did you say? Sava BMSC. Evo. Okay, but please take charge of your time, guys. And thank you all so much for having me. I really appreciate you being here. And I really appreciate talking to you guys. And I wish you well now and always. And that's what you're welcome to. Please let me come on any round of